Hey, what's up guys? We're going to illustrate ionic bonding with Lewis structures today. Ionic bonding is when electrons are gained and lost, or put another way, one atom is going to gain electrons to get a negative charge. One atom is going to lose electrons to get a positive charge, and then it's the fact that one of them is plus and one of them is minus that holds them together in a bond because they're charged, they're ions, so it's called ionic bonding, right? The idea is that you want each of the atoms to have a full valence shell, or a satisfied octet rule, if, if your teacher uses that word. What that means is that you either want a full outer valence shell, or an empty outer valence shell, because then the next actually occupied shell, which is like the next one down, is full by default. What I mean is that calcium brings two valence electrons with it. If you didn't know that, I want to point out that it's in the second column of the periodic table. That two tells you there's two valence electrons there. And oxygen brings six valence electrons. I want to point out that it's in group 16. It's also the one, two, three, four, five, sixth atom in its row. That's how you know how many valence electrons each thing brings. But the point is that oxygen follows the octet rule and wants eight valence electrons. It only has six right now. Now when you have a metal and a non-metal, it's going to be an exchange of electrons. This electron from calcium is going to be donated to the oxygen here, or transferred, lost by the calcium and gained by the oxygen. It no longer exists over here, it's going to be here instead. Now oxygen has seven electrons. Well, that's good, but that's not a full shell. Calcium has an extra electron here that it can give away. Calcium wants to lose that electron. Now it has an empty outer shell, and so it, the next actually occupied shell there is full. The, I guess it's the third shell that has eight electrons. And oxygen gained those two electrons to have a full third, uh, second shell as well. The point here is that you now have a calcium atom that has a two plus charge. All it had to do was give away its two valence electrons. And you have an oxygen atom that has eight valence electrons, or a full outer shell, and a two minus charge. That two minus and two plus are what cause calcium and oxygen to hold together in an ionic lattice and there's an ionic bond between these two ions. Cool? That was probably the easiest example you can find. It should have gone faster, but I was explaining it. Let's do some more examples together. Let's do aluminum and fluorine. Aluminum brings three valence electrons. One, two, three atoms over from the left, and fluorine brings seven. It's in group 17. There it is. Now, aluminum can donate one of those electrons to fluorine to give it a full outer shell. That fluorine is now happy, it has a satisfied octet rule, but this aluminum still has two extra electrons to give away. The only way it can possibly do that is if more fluorines get invited to the party. This fluorine brings seven uh, electrons with it, and this fluorine brings seven electrons with it. Aluminum says, hey guys, I got those electrons you want. Little donation here, full outer shell for that fluorine. Little donation here, full outer shell for that fluorine. Finally, the metal atom here, aluminum has an empty outer shell, which means its next occupied shell is full. So that aluminum sits here and has a three plus charge. You'll notice I'm not writing any electrons around it in the Lewis structure because it gave away those three electrons. And the fluorine surround it. Some teachers let you take shortcuts. I'm gonna write them all out for you. There's a fluorine with a minus one charge. It's minus one because it only gained one electron from the aluminum, but there are three of them. So this fluorine, which has eight electrons, has one extra from what it brought. And this fluorine has a minus one charge and one extra electron more than it brought. So you've got your aluminum with ionic bonds towards each of the negative fluorine ions as well. 
Ionic bonding. Beautiful. Let's do it again. Magnesium brings two valence electrons with it. Nitrogen, five. See, magnesium is one, two over, and nitrogen is one, two, three, four, five over. That's where the numbers come from. Nitrogen has five, that's three short. Magnesium says, hey, I have two I can give you. One, two, gone. One, two, donated, but nitrogen still doesn't have a full octet rule. Where is it gonna get the extra? Probably from another generous magnesium atom that brought two valence electrons. So that magnesium donates its electron. Now nitrogen has a full outer shell. But this magnesium has an extra electron. Where's it gonna donate that to? Probably another nitrogen. Nitrogen brings five and is hungry for three extras. So this magnesium says, hey, I got what you need. Here's one. Where are we gonna get the extra two? The answer is a third magnesium atom that comes into play. Brings two valence electrons, donation number one, donation number two, one, two, gone, gone. And we finally have three magnesium were atoms, now are ions with empty shells, empty outer shells. And nitrogens, which have gained three electrons each, also have full outer shells. That means we have magnesiums with two plus charges and nitrogens with three minus charges. Now that might not be a surprise to you. If you have a periodic table that shows you what the charges are, you might see here that it says magnesium brings a plus two charge. Okay, my camera can't focus on it, but what can you do? Magnesium usually brings a two plus charge to the, the table, and nitrogen likes having a charge of minus three. Some periodic tables tell you that. Um, which is why the formula is generally Mg3N2, because you need three magnesiums with a plus two charge each to balance out two nitrogens with a three minus charge each. Again, when I did aluminum fluoride over here, I wrote out three fluorines. Some teachers let you take a shortcut and just say, well, you have three of these, and you have two of these. You should clear with your teacher whether or not that's okay. It's not an official Lewis structure, but everyone knows that you know what you're doing when you write that shortcut. Cool? just want to point out one more thing here. If you have a transition metal like iron, they have to generally tell you what charge the iron is going to take. Iron can either be iron 2 oxide or iron 3 oxide. It depends on the electron configuration. I personally don't even know how to predict which of these is made. I think it's like it makes this one unless you don't have enough oxygen, then it makes this one. I don't know. It's not the point. The point is they have to tell you which valence to use. This is iron two oxide. So I need you to show that iron brings two valence electrons. Huh? Easy, iron two, two valence electrons. Iron three, three valence electrons. Ain't no thing. One, two, three, four, five, six electrons for the oxygen. If you don't know why, I implore you to check that it's in group 16. And now we need some donations happening. Oxygen needs two to have the, the octet rule eight. Luckily, this iron has two. Donation, donation, one, two, gone, one, two, added. And so we have an Fe with a two plus charge, and we have an O, which now has eight electrons around it and a two minus charge. Well, that one was easy. This iron, though, is going to get with oxygen. Oxygen needs two of these electrons to make the full outer shell, but then iron's gonna have an extra electron left over. It's gonna need to donate to this oxygen, which brings six, but then that oxygen's gonna need an extra. So you're gonna need another iron. It will donate its extra electron, but then you're gonna have two left over again. Holy Lord, it just gets messier. 
don't worry, it doesn't get much more messy than this. And please note, iron has three valence electrons when it's iron three oxide. This is donation number one. This is donation number two. Teachers like it when you show these arrows for ionic bonding, by the way, because it shows a transfer of electrons. This electron goes to another lucky oxygen atom. That oxygen atom, like we predicted, is still one short. So we donate it from another iron. There we go. That extra electron needs to fill in that space, and that extra electron fills in that space. All my oxygens are happy with a full octet. All my irons are happy with an empty valence shell. And I have two iron three pluses, and I have three oxygen two minuses. Great. It should not be a surprise, probably, that when iron with a three plus charge and oxide, which is oxygen with a two minus charge, get together, it makes Fe2O3, iron three oxide, and that's why you needed two Fe's and three O's to get the electrons to balance perfectly with each other. Whew, that was five baller examples to help you understand that ionic bonding is a transfer of electrons and you need to use as many or as few of each atom as possible to make sure that the charges balance. Make full octets and be good. Best of luck.